Hey guys, welcome to our final week of Halo, where we've been telling the story of the very first Christmas. I'm Ben and this is Taylor. If you were here last week, we talked about how the angel Gabriel was sent to deliver the good news to Mary and Joseph, that they were going to be the parents of the savior of the world or the Messiah. But that wasn't the end of the story. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about the Christmas story today. And I promise for those of you who've heard the Christmas story a bunch of times already, that we're gonna look at it in a little bit of a different way than you might have heard of it, of it in the past. Now, we know everyone has different Christmas traditions for celebrating Christmas with their friends and families, but a lot of Christmas traditions including par include parties and food. So, I'm curious, right now, by the show of hands, how many of you have already finished all of your Christmas parties? How many people are in the midst of a bunch of different parties? There should be a few of you if you came to our event on Friday. But last one, how many of you haven't even started any of our Christmas parties yet? Now, here's the thing. Whether you've already eaten all your Christmas meals this year, or you still have one or two or all of them to go, I'm guessing that we've all experienced a family dinner that needs to be rescued. Hopefully your Christmas dinners this year haven't looked like that. But when Christmas dinner is looking like Struggle City, which dish is sure to save the meal? Let's find out by making our favorite Christmas dishes go head to head until only one ultimate Christmas dish is left standing. Pursuit leaders, let the game begin. Now, some Christmas disasters can be re uh, rescued with a little extra mashed potatoes or maybe gingerbread cookie, but let's be honest, some problems 
aren't really that easy to solve. Listen, here's the thing, I'm a Christmas guy. And I love having family together and going overboard with gifts. In fact, my wife and I, we always agree on a set dollar amount uh, that we'll spend on each other for Christmas. Now, here's the thing. I blow through that number just on her stocking alone. And so when my parents first moved to Calgary and I was going to university in BC, I had the opportunity to fly into Calgary to have Christmas with them. But that year was the very first Christmas that our whole family wasn't together because my brother was still in Ontario and he wasn't able to come out and join us. Match that up with me being flat broke because you know, I was a student and I was in school, so I couldn't really buy any presents. So for me, Christmas was just a little bit incomplete. It wasn't really the same at all. That sounds rough, man. Sorry you had such a sucky Christmas. You know, Christmas isn't always merry and bright for everyone all the time. It can be a time of sadness and other not so joyful feelings. Maybe that's because the first Christmas when Jesus was born was filled with both joyful and difficult moments too. You know what I think we should do? I think we should have a sing-off to see who can nail the Christmas songs the best and perhaps bring just a little bit of joy to our Christmas right now. Mm. Whoever loses though has to wear a Christmas wreath at the next summit. Man, I'm preaching next summit. Okay, well good. Well like, let me start. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. A few moments later. Dude, I won, because that's not even a Christmas song. Okay, that's just you here. flexing your, your voice. Okay, here we go. Last Kirk week. Kurt Franklin knockoff. <laughs> Last week we talked about the beginning of the Christmas story when Mary and Joseph were told that baby Jesus was coming. And nine months later, they journeyed to Bethlehem on a donkey and got ready for Jesus to be born but there was no place for them to stay. So instead of giving birth to Jesus in a clean hospital room, Jesus was born surrounded by loud and smelly animals. Soon after they were visited by shepherds who, and wise men who came to worship little baby Jesus. It's really common to hear the story multiple times throughout the Christmas season and then kind of think we know everything that there is to know about the story. But sometimes when we think that way, we can actually miss some really important details. Like that happy manger scene with smiling shepherd, wise men, and fuzzy animals, that's not exactly how the story ends. Or you know how we love to portray Jesus' birth as a time of celebration and joy? Well, that's not entirely true either. Jesus' birth story was full of pain and discomfort. Remember, he was born among a bunch of smelly animals after his family couldn't find anywhere to stay. And after Jesus' birth, things actually turned tragic. At the time Jesus was born, that area of the world was ruled by a king named Herod. See, throughout his reign, Herod did terrible things in order to stay in power. He was known for banishing, imprisoning, and killing people he thought could threaten him. Because of Herod's hunger for power, the Christmas story doesn't end with joy and peace. It ends with a great injustice. In Matthew chapter two, we're introduced to a few characters. The wise men who are following a star, which will lead them to the king of the Jews who was to be born. Yeah, and while they're looking for the star, they run into another character named Herod. And when he learns about their quest, he too wants to find this new king who will be, who will be born. But unlike the wise men who wanted to worship Jesus, Herod wanted to murder Jesus. So once again, an angel plays a key part in the Christmas story. But this time the angel didn't appear with a message about a baby, a promise fulfilled, or good news for the whole world. Instead, the angel came with a message to run. So Mary and Joseph fled with baby Jesus into Egypt as refugees narrowly escaping Herod's attempt to kill baby Jesus by having every infant boy in the area killed. And people who haven't read the Bible might think it's a collection of very inspirational, feel-good stories. But in reality, the Bible is filled with stories of tragedy, trouble, fear, and confusion. But God is always at work in the, mid in the middle of every single story, including yours. Herod, he might have been working on his plan to maintain power and control, but God was at work carrying out the real plan. God's plan was to ensure the safety and rescue of the people that Herod had intended to harm. And so we got a couple questions right here that we're gonna have you guys ask each other in class. First one is this, how do you think Mary and Joseph felt while this was happening? 
Do you think it might have been hard to trust that God would rescue them? And the second one is that we have that we have for you is do you find it hard sometimes to trust that God will help or even rescue you? The Bible isn't about perfect people with perfect lives. It's about people who trusted God to rescue them from even the most terrible situation. Long before Mary and Joseph found themselves in deep trouble, the Israelites found themselves in deep trouble too. The book of Psalms, which is a book of songs and poetry, recounts many of the times God's people needed to be rescued. Sometimes they needed to be rescued from their own sin and its consequences. Sometimes they needed to be rescued from a challenging situation. And sometimes they needed to be rescued from their enemies. This is what Psalm chapter 80 says. Please listen, O shepherd of Israel, you who, who led uh, Joseph's descendants like a flock, O God enthroned above the cherubim, display your radiant glory to Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Show us your mighty power. Come to rescue us. Turn us again to yourself, O God. Make your face shine down on us. Only then will we be saved. O Lord God of heaven's armies, how long will you be angry with our prayers? You have fed us with sorrow and made us drink tears by the bucketful. You have made us the scorn of neighboring nations. Our enemies treat us like a joke and uh, turn ag us again to yourself, O God of heaven's armies. Make us, make your face shine down on us. Only then are we going to be saved. And this is just one psalm, but there are so many more like it. Over and over again in scripture, you see God's people crying out for help. And when you read a passage like this, maybe you think, wow, if these people need so much help, maybe God wasn't really that good to them. Or maybe if God actually cared about them, their lives wouldn't have been so difficult. But I don't see God causing harm or neglecting people in need. Instead, I see someone who trusted God so much that they weren't afraid to ask for help. And actually, the Israelites wrote an entire psalm or song about it. Christmas isn't just for people who feel merry and bright. This Christmas, God has something to say to you. Maybe it's if you feel like you're holding both joy and pain, or maybe you're feeling a little lost 
hurt or afraid or even hopeless. Or maybe you need someone to rescue you. The first Christmas wasn't perfectly peaceful either. Whatever you're going through, Christmas is a reminder. God is always ready to rescue. Here's a question for you guys to ask in groups. Have you ever needed God to rescue you from something? Did you ask for his help? And how did God rescue you? Did you guys know that on the iPhone, there's an emergency call feature? And with this feature, it's possible to call for help in less than three seconds. We're gonna be careful with it because we don't want Taylor to call the police. See, and what we see is that that's a pretty fast response time, but our ability to reach out to God and actually be heard is even faster. Psalms 91, 14 to 15 puts it this way. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. What's even more incredible is that sometimes God will give us help before we even ask for it. Mary and Joseph were visited by the angel Gabriel before they even knew they were in need of rescuing. There were, they were given some pretty scary emergency level news and they were given an opportunity to act. And God was ready to rescue Mary and Joseph, but they had to reach out and accept God's help and also participate in their own rescue as well. Rescue always requires movement and action. So how do you need God to rescue you or someone you love right now? How will you participate in your own rescue or how will you participate in the rescue of others? What do you need today? Do you need to call out for help? God is ready to rescue us, but we have to reach out and accept the help that's being offered. Do you need to be rescued from something? Maybe you need to be rescued from physical violence like Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus did. Maybe you need help getting out of a harmful relationship, scary situation or a painful experience. Whatever you need to be rescued from, I wonder if there's something God is inviting you to do in order to participate in your own rescue. I want you guys to know God is always ready to rescue. 
And sometimes God is inviting you in to reach out to a trusted adult. Be honest about how you're struggling. Go to God regularly with the things that you're dealing with. Do you guys need to be rescued from your own choices? Unlike Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus, sometimes we find ourselves in trouble because of our own choices. We are all sinful, there's no getting around that. We're prone to doing things that can hurt us and others, but God can rescue us from that too. Whatever you need to be rescued from, I wonder if there's something God is inviting you to do in order to participate in your own rescue. God is ready to rescue, but maybe God is also inviting you to choose to make a change in your behavior. Ask someone for help. Remove yourself from a situation or relationship that isn't helping you. Ask God to forgive you and change you from the inside out. Also, maybe you can help someone who needs to be rescued. You and I may not be angels, but that doesn't mean that we can't do for others what the angel did for Mary and Joseph on that very first Christmas. There will be times when we see someone in trouble and we might have the opportunity to step in and help. Maybe God is inviting you to comfort someone who needs hope, help provide shelter or clothing for someone in need, maybe to reach out to someone you know is struggling. See, the maybe you need to say the uncomfortable but also necessary thing to your friend who needs to hear it. Commit to praying for someone who's struggling or grieving. Some of us may need God's help to help us step away from our own destructive choices. Others of us may be in need of rescue because of harmful situations that are completely out of our control. Either way, listen to this, God loves you, God sees you, and God is always ready to rescue you. And sometimes, God is calling us to help each other and find the rescue that we need. So guys, this Christmas, no matter what you're experiencing, I hope it's clear God has a message for you. Whether this holiday season has been merry and bright or anything but, may the Christmas story remind you of these key things. God's timing is always right. Jesus is always good news. We can always share God's story and God is always ready to rescue. Let's pray together. God, you created us and you created this world. Colossians 1 says that you are the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. And so we can trust you, Lord, with our lives and what is going on in the world. God, some of us are having a great Christmas and we wanna celebrate that. Some of us are finding ourselves in a spot where we need you to step in and rescue us. And God, some of us are rescuing with consequences of choices that we have made. But this one thing we know is true, you deeply care about us. And so Jesus, this Christmas, would we come to know you well? In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Have a Merry Christmas, Have you guys. Have a great Christmas. See y'all. All right, see you guys.